Hmm, maybe it's time to try a new art medium. Let's do what all the cool kids are doing nowadays. Using watercolors. That should be super easy. All you need is water and colors. Check. So let's go. Boom. I am the reality punch right into your face. Hey everyone. So today it's all about typical mistakes when working with watercolors. My little cute mascot Artie the alpaca is helping us in this tutorial and plays the part of the stupid one again. And I'm the watercolor mastermind. <coughs> Psst, Artie. So let's start with the video. I've worked with watercolors for about one and a half years now and it's my favorite medium since then. In this video I share my tips and tricks with you and also the things that I've learned over time. Just for your information I'm using watercolor pens but these tips you can also apply for liquid watercolors or watercolors in tubes. I've divided this tutorial into two parts and you are watching part one now which focuses on the materials and preparations. In part two it will be more about planning your painting and painting techniques. And hopefully part two will be out soon. I already spent enough money for my watercolor, so let's save some money by using my precious copy paper. This shouldn't make any difference because my paints are great quality. Yeah, no. Copy paper is absolutely perfect for doing copies. Remember, we are working with watercolor, so we need paper that can handle water. And copy paper can handle basically nothing. That's why it gets grayish and wavy. But if this is what you want, go for it. Otherwise, use watercolor paper. This paper is so much thicker and it can handle much water. Ideally, you use paper with a thickness of 300 GSM or even higher. But I really like to use this Kenson mixed media paper for my work too. And this is just 160 GSM. You simply need to try out a bit what works best for you. Generally, there are two types of watercolor paper, hot pressed and cold pressed. The cold pressed paper has some structure to it, so little hills and valleys. That makes this beautiful typical watercolor painting effect. But if you really want to do tiny details in your work, better use hot pressed paper because that is super smooth. Mistake number two, use a loose sheet of paper. Now I have the perfect paper, let's start. Uh, why paper, why? Even when you use the perfect paper, it's a good idea using masking tape to make it stay in place. So just tape down your sheet of paper and make sure that you press down the tape really hard so that no water can run under your masking tape. Mistake number three, use one cup of water. Ah, <sighs> it's almost finished. Now let's add some bright yellow touches to my drawing. Uh, uh, what? When you do your drawing and clean your brush, the water gets really dirty after a little while. And when you use that dirty water, you don't get as vibrant colors as you could get with clean water. So what's the solution? Just use two cups of water. One of them you use always for cleaning your brush and the other one you use for activating your watercolors or adding water to your painting. Mistake number four, use a normal paintbrush. Okay, this is just personal preference like all other things in every tutorial out there, but this made a huge difference in my paintings. Use specific brushes for watercolors. What? Are you kidding? I've already bought watercolors, watercolor paper and a second cup. What else do you want me to buy? Artie, relax. You get watercolor brushes on Wish for free. These brushes have some special fancy bristle arrangement that can hold so much more water than normal paint brushes can do. You can do washes so much better and painting is so much more fun with the right paintbrush. It needs some practice controlling the amount of water in your brush, but you are smart, you can do that. Here you can see a comparison between a normal brush and a watercolor brush. With just one time dipping it into water, I can paint so much longer with my watercolor brush. 
Mistake number five, working without a paper towel. Oh no, alert, 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 alert. There will be always some accidents happening when you're working with watercolors. Because let's be honest, water can be damn mean sometimes. But for these cases, you should have always a paper towel or something similar ready. I really love to use this old burp cloth of my child because I can reuse it every time and I don't produce tons of trash. Maybe that's something for you too. You could also use a hand towel instead. With these things ready, you can easily handle these hairy situations. In part two of this tutorial, I will also show you a cool technique you can do with a towel. So definitely have such a thing ready. Mistake number five, don't know your materials. Ah, finished. That looks great. I just need to erase some pencil lines here. Hmm. It's nothing wrong when you're jumping right into the painting process. That's awesome. That's creative. Just do it. But if you like to achieve a certain outcome, it's important to know your mediums. And you can only learn how they work together when you try it out before you are starting your masterpiece. So for example, when you do your pencil line work and cover it just with water, the lines don't erase that well, even when there is no watercolor on top. At least this is a problem for me all the time. And it's really important that you just try out the different mediums you want to use together. Does your liner smear when you cover it with water? Can you erase the pencil lines later? How long do you need to wait until you can details with colored pencils on top of your watercolor painting? Just try it out so there won't be bad surprises for you. Mistake number six. Underestimating the evilness of masking tape. Finally finished. It's a masterpiece. I'm a genius. Let's just remove... No! Masking tape, God, why? Yeah, masking tapes can be really evil and destroy your paintings. I know that. Heck, I know that. Just test carefully if you can remove the tape. If this isn't the case, just use a hair dryer. This thing makes the glue more liquidly and you can remove your tape. That's all for part one now. Now you know everything about preparing your watercolor workstation and what to keep in mind. The next part of this tutorial will be out in April and this will focus on the drawing and painting techniques. If you liked this tutorial, please share it with your friends. And please consider subscribing to my channel for more art videos. I have a great 10,000 subscriber special video coming up soon, so don't miss that. Thank you so much for watching and I see you next week. Bye bye. Thank you.